Oh, what a beautiful piece. I tell you, I really enjoyed this movie. I noticed that the, the whole idea, the whole message was delivered in a really quick way, but nice done. You know, I, I definitely enjoyed the two actors. The kid is great, so well done, director. One thing that I really like about this one is the actor himself. I think he got such a range in his acting skill. You know, doing this by himself, just interacting with the environment around him, it was really cool to see it, you know. You can tell how deep into it his character he was. He really embodied that character and he plays it really well and I really like that. Something really unique about that film that I actually like is that the filmmakers pretty much just didn't use any dialogue. I'm sure you noticed that, it's pretty obvious. I just like how they relied on visual representation, visual storytelling to pretty much tell the stories. Now understand this is an international film competition all around the world, right? So these filmmakers use the language that all of us filmmakers understand and that is visual storytelling. That's just storytelling at its core. And I think that that was like, that, that alone, that fact alone blew me away. I also think it's kind of funny how the guy kind of tried to kill the other guy without a, you know, half of his beard. Also, I gotta say the introduction shot, like when you kind of just see his barber shop and he kind of enters it, I thought that was a pretty like, it just immersed me in the world right away. The story is also good, easy to follow. Um, if I have to say something about it that I might critique, could be, um, there was only, and, and honestly I feel like it was exposed and well exposed, but I felt like maybe talking, showing a little bit more the actual source of the problem would have give you a little bit more, so I felt like I didn't get that solid, uh, that's why she's like that. I really liked it, it was great. And to say that that was his first short film, with his girlfriend, I'm pretty sure that was also her first time acting. That was really well done, you know? And the pace of the movie, it's also one thing that I really like about it, you know? It builds the tension, you know? It gets you going, you kind of feel something was going to happen. You know, I, I kind of have the impression that we're going to transition into, you know, another dimension to see why it's going to happen, or is there another version of her, you know, under, ground or under the world or whatever you know but that was cool you know the only thing that i have to say about this is uh the demon if you have to say you know i wish that demon came out from under the bed you know instead of the side because you know when she was reaching she was going looking down to see what happened and she saw that hand so i wish the demon came from there instead of the side so that's the only thing that i but that I have to say about this part. It was really good though, I, I really liked it. What I really like about it is literally by the end, is eye for eye, if you don't already know Spanish, the guy took his eye back and it's kind of nasty, honestly. I was kind of like, like, uh, like I, don't, I don't like seeing stuff like that. But at the same time though, I thought it was pretty cool. And a little twist I noticed in the film was that the picture of the girl he picked up, like when he ran outside the backyard trying to escape from the guy, he ended up finding her like on the floor without her eyeball of course and i just thought like oh okay that's where she came from you know scott yes it's time yes it is we just saw all the official selections and now we're going to the awards are you ready i'm ready let's do this First off, I want to say thank you to joining us today for the international film competition. It makes a great deal to us that all of you can join us from around the world. Greetings filmmakers, my name is Fernando Rivera, I am your judge, your warden for the International Film Operations. A little bit about myself, I'm a director based out of here in Orlando, Florida. I direct a ton of music videos, I've done plenty of local commercials, I even done some work for the theme parks here in Orlando, Florida, some out of state jobs, a good amount of out of country jobs, but can't wait to watch all of your stories. Good luck to all the filmmakers who submitted their short films with us and thank you so much again for supporting this film festival made for you. As you might know, IFO is committed to implementing some of the most unbiased voting strategies for some short films. 
We believe that allowing the people, you, the filmmaker, to control part of the vote is best. We believe that the peer voting establishes an equal opportunity. As an organization who promotes the advancement of young and upcoming independent filmmakers, we also believe that the peer review method will likely allow and promote active learning opportunities. All submissions will be divided into equal groups and based on the participant submission categories to be considered into the official online film festival. Round one participation is required to be considered to continue in the competition. And if you have any more questions, please refer to the general and voting rules for more details at internationalfilmoperations.com slash rules. We have received a large number of short films from literally everywhere. And for chapter one, as your warden, I have picked the first group of 10 short films. And now it's my honor to introduce the first short film all the way from Peru, Hole Stepper, directed by Sergio Fernandez. No se olviden de repasar lo visto en clase todas las tardes en su casa. Para Majito, de tu profe más churro, Ángel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 Llegó el profe. <laughs> En vista de que la mayoría de ustedes salió desaprobado en el examen de... En vista de la... Que, que, que la... En vista de que la mitad del salón salió desaprobado en el examen sobre el virreinato, he decidido que les voy a dar otra oportunidad. Así que el día de mañana les tomaré nuevamente el examen para que me demuestren su verdadero potencial. ¿Qué pasa, chicos? Parece que hay un virus. Carnaval. ¿Y allá qué pasa? No me excluyan, pues tengo el chiste. Saben que no pueden hacer uso de la pizarra sin autorización. Ya, ¿quién ha sido el artista? Chicos, no creo que sea necesario llamar a Norma. ¡Dana! ¿Qué pasa? Lorenzo, ven para acá. Pero, profe, si yo no he hecho nada. Lorenzo, ven. Lorenzo, cuéntame, ¿quién fue? Yo no he visto nada, profe. Lorenzo, tienes la obligación de decirme. No sé, profe. Traje algodón y alcohol, por favor. Chicos, no pueden hacer dibujitos en la pizarra. Oye, profe, no es justo. <risa> Lorenzo, no te estoy pidiendo nada del otro mundo. <risa> so there you go, guys. That was Whole Separate, directed by Sergio Fernandez. Very interesting film, very unique concept. I gotta admit though, I didn't exactly like the intro to it. It just distracted me a bit and I feel it took me out of it. That's just my opinion, but like a judge, like the warden that I am, I have to be honest with myself and be honest with you guys. That's just how I felt. Now the rest of the film, very nice pacing. I felt that it moved forward very well. It was very well acted out. The performance of our main character, the teacher, very innocent man. You can see that he's a teacher and he only just wants to do right by his students. Oh shit, why did you gotta do that? <laughs> what is it? As you see, the teacher, the way his performance was, he was a very innocent man. He only wanted to be a good teacher, but not for him, for his students. And honestly, he treated the students like they were his friends. He was willing to give them another chance when they failed. It's their fault that they failed, but yet 
he still wanted to be a good guy and give him the opportunity to pass. And even when presented with that opportunity, the students just betray it, they disrespect him, they make a funny video about him, post it online. So it was very interesting and I really like when he discovered what was being posted about him, how he took action. And he went from what looks like a very innocent man to someone that was just angry, someone that had enough, someone that just didn't want to get bullied anymore. And I really like that dynamic. I really like how that changed in the film from being innocent to, I guess you can say he's kind of the bad guy now because he yelled at the students. But in my opinion, he did what he had to do. And I really like that performance as a whole. So now without further ado, let's move into our second short film, Sabet Legion de Brujas. Enjoy guys. All right, guys, hope you enjoy that. Real quick, we're gonna get into our other judge, Milo. He wrote some things down and we're gonna read his notes about this film. So this is what he said. He says that the film made him appreciate metal and live theater, teatro, he put that in parentheses, and definitely the vintage look enhances the dynamic and horror look in this short film. So that's what he had to say real quick. Now we're gonna get into my review of this film and what I thought about it. So real quick, when the film started, I thought it started really, really strong. I thought it had a really interesting look, super dynamic. I like how the shots came in, how we have our mayor, mayor, male character coming from the back, coming in, right? And then we see our female character. She looks like a regular female, but she's a, she's a witch. That's the whole point of the film. And he's just discovering that she had put a spell on him to get him to fall in love with her. So he didn't, never really loved her. He was just, you know, under the influence. Right? And I thought that was an interesting dynamic. And when they kissed, I, you know, pretty strong shots, pretty intense. But after that, for me personally, that's where the film kind of went below. That's just my opinion. And like I said, that's the judge, that's the word. And I gotta be fair and give what I feel and what I felt about the film. After that first intro scene, I didn't really like the rest of it. I felt a little bit lost. And mind you, I decided to watch it twice. I didn't watch it once. I watched it twice and then I watched it again the next day because I was still a little bit confused and I wanted to be fair in judging this film by saying, okay, maybe I was a little bit too tired yesterday. Let me see it first thing in the, in the morning. And I still felt the same way about it. Shortly after, even though it had good lighting, I just, I felt like the pacing was off. I felt a little bit slow. I was trying to like understand some things. It made me feel an example when the other two females come in, which are the witch's daughter, so younger witches. I, I didn't know who they were right away. It was a little bit confusing. And it wasn't until as they're like in the middle of the spell and she comes back and they're like, mother, I understand that that's supposed to be the review, but it just didn't make sense to me. And then you have the other character that's kind of like walking around, right? You know, our Igor character, he's kind of just walking around. So it didn't make, a lot of sense to me. I actually had to go into the description to read about it, to learn more and kind of just understand the film as a whole to get the details that I was missing. And that's my thing. I felt as, as a film, as someone that's watching this, I shouldn't have to go read something else for it to make sense, right? A good film and something that has good stories should be able to translate past the screen to you to make you feel like you're witnessing it. That's the whole immersion factor of making these short films and just filmmaking in general. And I felt that was kind of lacking. And mind you, I saw this film three times. So it's not that I'm not trying, it's not that I don't care. I'm trying to go in there. I'm trying to be immersed in the world and it just wasn't doing it for me. So because of that, even though it had one, probably the strongest intro that I've seen from all the films, it 
died down fairly quickly for me. And that's what I didn't like about that. And without further ado, let's get next into our next film. All right, everybody. And now without further ado, on to our next film, all the way from Mexico, Among the Trees. Jugando en su jardín, rodeada de flores, mirando los insectos y sus bellos colores, vio una linda mariposa que lucía distinta y empezó a seguirla hasta perderla de vista. Un extraño temor comenzó a invadirla. Al no conocer el camino, supo que estaba perdida. Aquel inmenso árbol le sirvió de consuelo. Abrazó el tronco llorando y miró al cielo. La pequeña asombrada no podía creerlo. Sentía como el árbol sin llegar a serlo. Descansando en su corteza, cuento las ramas con certeza. Y si camino entre la hierba, veo los insectos bajo la tierra. Ahora conozco el bosque, que desde sus raíces habla. Y antes de caer la noche... Me guiarán de regreso a casa. Pasados varios meses, se cambia de casa y el verde bosque deja de acompañarla. Así se acostumbra a su nuevo estilo de vida, con calles de pavimento y más avenidas. Tiene un buen empleo, no le falta nada. Cuida a su compañero y riega sus plantas. Un día... Ocurre algo a su regreso. El tierno cachorro corre y escapa travieso. Pasa horas caminando buscando a su perro, pero no lo encuentra ni sabe su paradero. De pronto, algo colorido llama su atención. y coloca su mano en aquel tronco marrón. Sorprendida la invade un maravilloso recuerdo tras mirar el árbol y un conocido destello. Se concentra entonces y respira hondo logrando sentir las raíces del fondo. Pero en el bosque las raíces hablaban y en la ciudad éstas no se conectaban. Se separa del árbol con mucha aflicción. Cuando entre las ramas sale un gorrión. La joven asombrada no puede creerlo. El ave desde su mano comparte su vuelo. Las alas inundan mi cabeza y emprendo el vuelo con certeza. Siento el viento en la cara como si en la ciudad sobrevolara. Ahora conozco a las aves y su visión sobre las calles, pues con el trazo de sus alas, todos los pájaros hablan. Desde el alto cielo de pronto adivina, su cachorro jugando con aquella golondrina. Agradece al gorrión llena de alegría y va por su perro con las aves de guía. Con el paso de los años, remodela su casa hasta que el verde vuelve a acompañarla, pasando el tiempo entre frutos de su huerto y enseñando todos sus saberes a su nieto. Jugando en el jardín, rodeado de flores, mirando los pétalos y sus bellos colores, el pequeño asombrado no puede creerlo. Una mariposa se acerca y quiere conocerlo. Al caminar descalza sobre la hierba, tocar los árboles o sembrar la tierra, al acercarme a las aves y a todos los animales, sé que estamos conectados y somos iguales. Puedo sentir cada ser vivo y ellos se comunican conmigo. Por eso es mi deber transmitirlo para que las generaciones venideras sepan cuidar y apreciar el vínculo.
All right, everybody, that was Among the Trees. Very interesting animation film. And if you know anything about me, I already love animation film. I'm seeing all the Pixar movies. I watch anime religiously. So I was very excited to see this film. And first off, very unique animation to it. I really like that aspect. I don't think I've seen that type of animation. Maybe it's more common in somewhere else in the world, but I've never, I've never seen it like that. So I was very interested by it. Now it had a good story to it, but my main issue with the film is that I felt like it was just too short. Like it was here, and I think the story that it needed to be told should be up here. An example, the film is literally, like the runtime is about five minutes, but it ends around four minutes and 30 seconds, 35 seconds, the rest is for credits. So the story that it needed to be told, I felt needs to be just a little bit longer. I understand what she was doing with that she can talk to nature, she can talk to trees, the connection is broken, and then she gets the connection back, trying to find her dog. And the beautiful thing to me is that years later, when she's an old lady, she's teaching that to her grandson. But that's the thing, I felt like that was a lot of information just to pack into a small little piece of work. It was a great work, but it just needs to be expanded. At least for me, that's my opinion. But other than that, I love the film as it is. All right, guys, our next film, all the way from Spain, we have The Divine Tragedy. Dante, te, te estábamos esperando. Hombre, Dante, ¿tú por aquí? ¿No te veía desde lo de Beatriz? Ya es que necesitaba un tiempo para poder pensar todo un poco. <risa> no te preocupes, para eso estamos. Prueba esto, que está buenísimo. No, creo que voy a pasar. No tengo mucha hambre. Ay, Dante, amigo mío, ¿cómo estás? Llegas tarde, ¿eh? Ey, espera, que te sirva un poquito de vino. ¿No ves que queda poco vino, imbécil? Hola, Dante, cariño. Irás tú por el vino, ¿verdad que no? No, creo que estoy servido. Gracias. No te preocupes, corazón, pero come lo justo y necesario, que no sé si va a haber para todos. Dante, cabronazo. ¿No te veía? Desde lo que pasó con aquella fulana. ¿Cómo se llamaba? Beatriz. Me cago en Dios y en los clavos de Cristo. ¡Qué zorra! Ve vino por el amor del diablo. ¿No te das cuenta? Si afirmas la existencia del diablo, estás por ende afirmando la existencia de Dios. Hola, Dante. No te esperábamos. Bienvenido. ¿Qué tal estás? Pues, sinceramente... Ya está, el místico de los cojones. <risa> místico. Parafraseando a Mark Twain, nunca discutas con un estúpido. Te hará descender a su nivel y ahí te ganará por experiencia. Y polla. Ignorante. Dante, tú seguro que eres de los míos, de los que ponen la razón y el progreso por delante de todo. ¿A que sí? Pues... Sí, pero también creo en otras cosas. Es decir, también creo en la espiritualidad del ser, por ejemplo. Y ahí arriba hay algo seguro, pero lo que pasa es que todavía no sé el qué. No te dejes engañar por estupideces, Dante. De hecho, que mis padres no me bautizaran es probablemente lo mejor que me podía haber pasado. Brindo por eso. Dante, cariño. Me he enterado de lo de Bea. Qué putada, ¿no? Ya. Es una decepción. Sinceramente no esperaba que la relación terminase así, pero... teníamos algo bonito y se equivocó. ¿Te puedo hacer una pregunta? 
está, ¿no? ¿Follaba bien? ¿Qué es día? Siempre con lo mismo. ¿No tienes otro puto tema de conversación que no sea de sexo? No pasa nada. Perdona, la verdad. No hagas caso a este trozo de mierda. Que no pasa nada. Deja de guardada, ¿vale? Estamos comiendo. ¿Qué coño hace él aquí? Dante, relájate. Él también fue una parte del infierno. Él tiene que estar aquí. ¿Qué más le dice? ¿Qué más le dice? Es el mentiroso de mierda este. Dante, él es el noveno círculo. Todos tenemos nuestra función aquí. Dante, siéntate. ¿Qué hijo de puta es el causante de que yo esté aquí? Dante, siéntate. Es que no me lo puedo creer. Para mí eras como de la familia, eras como mi hermano. E hiciste lo peor que podría haberle hecho un amigo. Hicimos el día más feliz de mi vida. Voy a tener que pedirte que te marche, Dante. Tu tiempo aquí ya ha terminado. Vaya, vaya. Si hubiese sabido cómo se iba a poner, no me hubiese tirado a la golfa de su novia. Everybody, that was a divine tragedy. Now I got a few things I want to say in my review. First off, I really like the cinematography, especially in the beginning and specifically in the beginning. We'll get more to the end in a little bit, but I really like the uniqueness of using the people's back 
to go into another shot, another POV, if we could say. Even though it's done already, he was able to do it really seamlessly. Like, I never got tired when he went and cut to someone's back, another shot, someone's back, someone all the way up, eight people down on the table. That was really unique. I really liked that. It never seemed overplayed. There's plenty of instances that other people have done this and it looks played out. It looks boring. It even looks stupid. But our director over here really did it in a way that made it work. It was very, it was shot very gracefully, funny enough. Anyway, going into some more things about that scene, I noticed that a few things just didn't work out in that particular scene. An example, we had one character that he starts talking and there's a wine glass in front of his mouth. We should not have that, I'm pretty sure you guys probably noticed. And then moving on from that, he is in hell, right? He's dressed in all black, he goes to purgatory to talk to the priest. I don't have a lot of things to say on that scene just because I felt that was shot really well. There isn't a lot to like take out out of that scene or kind of nitpick because I think it was done really well in that part. Now he goes to heaven and he's dressed in all white to go visit his girlfriend that's in paradise. And the 180 kind of, we just spin circles around them, right? It makes sense in the aspect that his girlfriend is not letting him explain himself and explain his reasons. So it makes sense that he just takes the power like, no, now you're gonna let me talk because I let you talk a bunch of times right now. So now it's my turn to explain myself. That makes complete sense. So we have a power shift in the 180 to go to him, but then it happens again and then it happens again and again and again and again and again to the point that it doesn't make sense to me, at least to me anymore, you know, like I'm sure this is probably a great idea up on the board and they were trying to execute it really well, but you know, as a judge, that's the word and I gotta be honest with what I felt. At the end of it, it was kind of like, was this all for nothing? Cause uh, at least that's how I took it. I thought he was dead the whole time. Cause they literally say hell. And then he goes to purgatory to a priest. They talk about he must forgive so that he can go to heaven. And now that he's in heaven or paradise, you know, he leaves. And then all of a sudden he's back in the real world. He's, and when he looks at his cell phone to see the girl, um, it looks like it's a completely different girl. So like he's moved on. He said his piece, but it just didn't, I don't know, that little that little ending didn't make sense to me. There's been a few films that I've seen that I don't even like what it's going, but then the ending saves the whole film. This one kinda, kinda lost me. So that's what I have to say about The Divine Tragedy. All right, fellow filmmakers, our next film comes all the way down from Brazil. It's called Breaking Promises from Vivid Hearts. All right, guys, that was the film. Hope you enjoyed it. Before I get into my review, we got some notes from our other judge, Scott Mena. So let's see what he has to say real quick. So there were some scenes that could have been shortened, like the main character staring into the distance or when the boyfriend is looking for his partner, it would help with the pacing of the short. And you know what? I kind of have to agree with that, but we'll get into mine a little bit later. I think the close-ups to the ring, the mask, the headphones, the other items in the film, what have brought more into the sequence? I personally didn't like the items, but again, we'll get into it. Love the first shot of the couple together. The framing was perfect. Don't lose that moment and keep the camera on them. I wouldn't have planned them into it, but leave it on them. Enjoy the shots established by the characters relationship when things look positive. And I agree with that 100%, Scott. The change in color to show the situation relationship was done well. Great use of Dutch angle throughout the film it was a great way to show the conflicting love the two characters had due to health situation. 
the dialogue spoken in the end is beautiful. I love that the film felt like a silent film. Enjoy the symbolism in the beginning. It foreshadowed the problem that would arise in the couple's relationship. So there we go. So now that we have Scott's, you know, his review, we're gonna get into what I said in my notes. All right, guys? So real quick, the film, dang, where do I start? That's pretty much how I have to start. Cinematography-wise, let's start there. There was a lot of like camera shake and whatnot. And I understand like we're all independent filmmakers, so we gotta work with what we got. And if we don't have a dolly, we use a skateboard. You know, if we don't have a tripod, we stack it on a few boxes so that it shake, it doesn't shake. And this film had a lot of camera shake to the point that it was noticeable and distracting. Sometimes we have handheld cameras and there's gonna be camera shake naturally, but there's no reason to have as much camera shake that this film had to the point that it was distracting. Now, there was a lot of different Dutch angles in this film and it was a little weird for me. Like Scott said he liked it and he thinks it foreshadowed, but I felt it was just, just like the camera shake, while the camera shake was probably done on accident, the Dutch angles were a little bit overused. I understand the relationship is taking a rocky end. It's kind of had some bumps in the road, but it was just a little bit too much for my liking. It was a little bit more distracting than adding on. You want these camera movements to really add to your film, add depth to your story, and not be a distraction. Even if it was the coolest shot in the world, if it doesn't add to the story, there's no point in using it, right? Now, moving along, there is a lot of close-ups with the ring. There's a lot of different items that they had throughout, and it was a bit too much like i had to go through it again to kind of understand that okay so he has like a health problem going on it wasn't obvious right away when you go into let's say when they were happy like i guess in their past that was honestly the best part of the film that was shot pretty well you honestly honestly believe that those two guys were in love and that well it looked real beautiful it looked that was honestly the best part of the film that little chunk right there and then it goes black and white to show that they have some issues. And then it continues to film to where the guy lays the ring down and then he pretty much disappears. After that, I feel like it kind of goes down. So basically it's a lot of shake, a lot of distractions. We have some good stuff going on and then it disappears as quickly as it came. So because of that, I can't really say that there was a lot of things I liked about the film, honestly. I'm just being honest. I have to be honest. It's my job to be honest, right? And it would be a disservice if I was just like, yeah, it's great just to make you feel better, you know? That's that's not a good friend, right? That's not a good judge. So I gotta be honest with it. And there was just a lot of things that distracted me a lot more than brought me into the world of the film. And you want the opposite to happen. You want people to just go in there and enjoy it, right? Pretty much that's what I have to say about the film. All right, everybody, moving on to our next film. All the way from Honduras, we have the short film called Asortas. Somos creación que flota liviana, rodeada de aire sobre la materia. Somos espíritu que emana del pensamiento, conciencia y moral que germina de la nada. Somos imprevistos, presentes, temporales, como una flor. All right, guys, that was the short film, Asortas. Now, before we get into my review, as always, we're gonna see what Scott has to say real quick. So let's get right into that. First thing he says, love the way the text was presented in the beginning. Very moving and captivating shots throughout the short. The first few shots really caught my attention. I'm gonna have a few things to say about the shots a little bit. The use of color was great with the sense of pain, beauty, and hope within the film. 
The use of overlapping images to show the emotion of the main character was very well done. My favorite shot was the moving clouds surrounding the character in the room. It was beautiful. And honestly, Scott, I have to agree with you 100% there. Enjoyed the journey we as an audience took in this woman's experience trying to step out of her depression or trail and end it with her stepping out into her next helpful chapter. I thought the actress picked for the role did a great job conveying her frustration and alienating in the, in the piece. So there you have what Scott has to say. Now we're gonna get into what I gotta say. So first off, I gotta say the cinematography in this film. I always seem to talk about cinematography, but this one did like an amazing job. I, they only had five minutes to tell the story and it was, it was honestly perfect. The shots really matched with the film really well and the cinematography was really A1 and possibly the strongest, what I felt was one of the strongest points of this film. I will say, um, you can see it playing right there behind me and you see the bars on the back, the little black bars. I don't like the black bars cause I can see that that's fake. That's 16 by nine. They shot it 16 by nine. They added black bars. It's different if you shot in 2.4 by one, which naturally gives it black bars on a 16.9 uh, monitor. But I, I don't know. For me personally, I don't like things like that. Uh, when it's faked, you should just do it naturally. I don't know why. I just, I just have to say that. I see it done so much where people think that is cinematic gold just by adding the aspect ratio like that, just by faking it. No, it's fake. Just use anamorphic. If you can't use anamorphic, like I said in some other pieces, just use what you got. Just use what's available to you, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. Moving on towards the film, Scott's favorite shot, which is also my favorite shot, when she's in the room by herself and there's clouds everywhere, I thought that was an amazing take. I thought that was really superb. It was honestly my favorite shot and probably an amazing shot that yeah, I, I was kind of blown away. You can see I don't got a lot of things to say, and that's because I'm a little bit speechless by it. And not only the shots were amazing, but everything that accompanied, accompany, like the music, was seriously just out of this world. It really matches it perfectly. And when you go to the shots and you see her half inside the bathroom looking at herself all the way to when she packs her bags and she leaves, everything was done really well. And the use of color was really well done, where you see color outside, you start with color outside and then you go inside the film and then there's not a lot of color, right? And then when she leaves again, there's more color. Basically she's getting, you know, she's her own worst enemy and she's leaving the place that has been costing her whatever troubles in her life and trying to find a better outcome somewhere else out in the world. And I think that was a very beautifully well done. And that's pretty much my review of the film. If you're a filmmaker who loves telling stories, please submit your short films to us over at internationalfilmoperations.com and then click submit. Now, you can also follow us on our social media pages and platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All right, our next film comes from Colombia called Whisper.
All right, guys, that was Whisper. Now, as always, we're going to get right into the review, but we also have some notes. Not one, but two judges. We got Nilo first, followed by Scott. So I'm going to get into what Nilo has to say. He has a quick little note saying that the short film Whisper is full of characters fighting their demons by themselves, not for the weak of mind. Agreed. Now, going into Scott's notes, what he has to say. Let's see right here. He has a little bit to say, so bear with me. Have the credits roll in the beginning, not as black, but with a shot of the clock. I think the shaking effect with the tint of color of the demon appearance wasn't necessary. I agree with him. Instead, use the red light that you have and slowly make it appear when something scary is about to happen. The slap scene could have been better from another angle. If you film something like this again from a different angles, you see which one is best and realistic. Lena Garcia did a good job showing fear, sadness, and mystery to her character. And that was pretty much Scott's note. So now that we talked about what Nilo has to say, what Scott has to say, we're gonna get what I have to say. So real quick, Whisper was a very interesting film. It was indeed about like fighting demons. I like in the beginning where when it showed the demon or say or her or whatever it is, it, it goes through the same shots again, literally the exact same shots, but with different lighting to show like, okay, she's not dreaming. She's not in a nightmare anymore. This is her real life, right? That was an interesting fact to me, but then after that, it kind of just, it lost me a little. I have to agree with Scott that the slapping scene could have been done differently. It's something that I think a lot of people have done. You know, you cut to a close up very quickly because you don't have the proper choreography. You cut to a different angle or a reaction of it, as opposed to just a big wide shot to show it. I totally agree with what Scott had to say. There's plenty of ways that could have been done better. Speaking of which, something that was very distracting to me was the fact that there was a lot of like audio mistakes. It was pretty obvious that most of the audio came from the camera itself and not from some kind of mic. No room tone was done. It's obvious that when another character cuts, there's a different voice or a different like background noise to the, to the film as a whole. And that just kind of takes you out of it. You're just trying to listen and then all of a sudden you can't really listen because the audio is all over the place. And now going back to some of the effects that they use, whenever they show the demon, it seemed like a 3D effect because you always see the same blue, red, and green, like an RGB effect. And funny enough, I use those effects a lot of times in music videos because they look cool, but this is supposed to be like a horror piece and it didn't feel like it was scary at all because the effects just didn't match the feeling that they were trying to go for. I get where they were trying to go for. I like how they did like a little reveal at the end showing what is going on, like the mystery that's going on. And I do agree with Scott and that the main female character was really good at just hiding mystery, hiding what's going on. And I think she was honestly the best part of this film. But other than that, I don't have anything else to say. That was pretty much what I have to say for the film. All right, guys, without further ado, moving on to our next short film, all the way from Brazil, Redoma.
And there you go, that was the short film Redama all the way down from Brazil. Now, like always, we got some words from Scott. I'm gonna get into those, then we're gonna get into what I gotta say about the film. So real quick, totally didn't feel that the 10 minutes went by, which is a great sign. And you know what, I agree, when it finished, I didn't notice 10 minutes had passed by. Great establishing shot of the intro where our main actor lays on his bed like a caterpillar in a cocoon ready to burst. Love the fact that his movements and emotion through his face felt like he was feeling his surroundings and figuring out the world like a newborn child. Great symbolism with the mask, the black eyes, and much more. The music was fantastic, brought the mood and tension throughout the piece. For me, this felt like the fears of COVID and the emotional toll it has taken on all of us. The stages of worry, absorption of the media, the fear of being out, and so much more was conveyed in this beautiful short. And you know what? I couldn't have said it any better than he could have. But you know what? Doesn't matter because I'm still gonna say it anyway. So now, what I gotta say about this film, the film was beautifully done, was beautifully shot. And I have to agree with Scott and stating again that it, it didn't feel like a lot of time has passed. A lot of times you see short films and you were kind of there like, it's 10 minutes past, it's 20 minutes past, but you kind of just go right through it like nothing ever happened. And just like how Scott pointed out, the fact that he's laying in the bed like a cocoon, I thought it was the same thing, you know? Like, it was like he was, he's coming out of a cocoon like a bug. I looked at it like he was basically, this is a human being that's been in isolation for God knows how long, and he's basically an animal all over again. He's not a human anymore. He's not interacting with other humans. He's basically like an animal, and he's just trying to figure his way out of the, the room. You know, he comes out with basically in his pajamas. And if you notice, he never changed wardrobe because why does he need to if he's basically in the same spot for days that turn the weeks, that turn the months? You know what I'm saying? So when he came over to the dinner table and the first thing he does is ice turns black and he just looks at the phone, that's his only source of entertainment. And I think everyone can kind of relate to it because during COVID, we've all had some kind of isolation and some kind of quarantine. And it's ridiculous to think that so many films have been shot to the point that you get annoyed. Like, I got annoyed the first time I saw a film about COVID and I thought it was really stupid. But then I saw this film and it would completely change what, and it, what I felt about the topic at all. Cause he did it right. The filmmakers did it right. The crew did it right. They did a fabulous job. Everything matched, the music matched. The way how he used the mask to kind of symbolize like as if he's going outside. This wasn't like, oh, I'm annoyed that I have to wear a mask. This was like, like it, it was like a way like you have to protect yourself from monsters outside type thing. Very extreme. And I like how his body is basically dancing. I don't know if he's a dancer in the past, but it kind of gives you the vibe that he was. And I love how he just goes about it. You know, he falls asleep right on the floor, like how probably most of us fall asleep in front of a TV on the couch during the isolation. I thought the film was very well done. I like how the cinematography is great. It's a film that literally didn't have a lot inside of it. Like every wall is white. The floor is just regular wood. There's no decorations on the table. He's wearing, he's not even wearing a shirt. He's just wearing like pajama pants or something. And the only real thing that you get that looks different is when you look outside the window. Like there's a whole world out there but he can't explore it. He's stuck inside his world, inside the building or apartment that he's in. And that's pretty much what I got to say about the film. Now for our next film, all the way down from Argentina, we have the short film, Out of Mind. Enjoy. There you have it, that was Out of Mind. Now without further ado, let's see what our other judges have to say about this. So first off, we're gonna start with Nilo. And Nilo has to say, very poetic short film. 
out of mind. I believe that the character is fighting his own demons through society. Recommended. Neil loves it. Let's get on to what Scott Mena has to say. Oh, Scott, is a, he wrote a, a, little, a little paragraph. Very poetic. Enjoyed the overlapping images bringing the highlighted reality of the storytelling. Great use of black and white and a splash of color. Bravo on the great effects. It felt like climbing into a filmmaker's mind, going through his thoughts on us becoming a thing of the past. Interesting, interesting. All right, now we're going to get into what I got to say. First off, uh, what I have written down here, very good cinematography, very good pacing, interesting shots. They all felt very unique, right? And what I mean by that is I really like some of the shots. Like, I don't think I've seen a shot where the guy's looking at it, right? He's looking at outside and then you see him looking through his eyes again, if that makes sense. You were like, it kind of reminds me of those mirrors when there's two mirrors and you stand between the two mirrors and it looks like it's forever, infinity mirrors. That's pretty much what came to mind, but in a lot more creative sense and a lot more appeasing, obviously. I really like that fact. Some of the shots were pretty well placed out. Like when he walks through the paintings, right, of the wall, and then he walks through it again, and he walks through it again, and then he's basically like thinking of himself walking through it. You know, there's a lot of things that I like, and then there's some things that I just didn't quite understand. This is a film that I had to watch more than once just so it can kind of make sense to me. And even then, I still want to watch it again just to so I can know what's going on, I guess. But, you know, other than that, there was a bit more confusion of what he was talking about, what he meant. I wasn't sure he was just battling, like, whatever thoughts he was in his mind. I got to say, my favorite shot is at the end, the black and white shot. It just had the most perfect leading lines I've ever seen in a short film. So everything was, like, straight, and he just walks away from it. But pretty much that's what I have to say about the film. And now moving on to our next short film, Dog Killer, all the way from Brazil.
gato, eu tô fazendo o exoba vegetariano. Quer uma taça de vinho? Quero. Hum, deixa eu te falar. Hum. Encontrei teu vizinho sinistro lá embaixo. Qual deles? O dono desse cachorro aí, que não para de latir. Esse demônio, ele late o dia inteiro. Eu tô ficando doido, sério? Deu um medo do cara. Fiquei imaginando ele, né? apertando o pescoço do cara. Esse que aí também foi teu vizinho. Uhum. Aquele. Diz que o cachorro dele adora. Thank <laughs> you. 
Tava animado hoje. <risos> Nem esse latido te desanimou. Gostou? Que mais? Que mais? Antes eu preciso fazer uma pergunta. Mas... Você voltou a comer carne? Não, por quê? Porque eu vi uns quibes na sua geladeira. Não, não são pra mim. São pra quem então? Os filhos da Isabel, sabe? O diarista? Hum, eles estavam hum. aí e eu comprei pra eles. Hum. Mas eu vou jogar fora já. Agora. Hum. Vem cá. Hum. Vem cá. Hum. <risos> Saí isso no jornal. Oh, my God. 
And there you have it, that was the dog killer. Now, before moving on to mine, of course, we're gonna see what Scott has to say. So let's get what Scott has to say to us. Amazing use of lighting throughout the film, agreed. Great job using the establishing shots in the beginning to put the credits. The acting was very well done for each character, each fulfilled their purpose in the short. Nice choice of shots to show the tension and humor in every scene. What felt like a horror movie at first quickly turned into a suspenseful comedy. Enjoyed the change of pace and the surprise ending. That's Scott's, but we also have another one. We got Nilo over here. So Nilo, even my dog started barking at the beginning of the short film, Dark Killer. But the ending was funny and unexpected. And that's true, it was unexpected. And I have to agree where credit is due. Now I'm going into what I have to say in my review of the film. Essentially, I thought it was a good film. Something that I gotta say that this film did really, really well, and I think other people can take from this is every shot is moving. I'm not saying that every shot needs to be on like a dolly or every shot needs to be on a gimbal or something like that, but it felt like there's a lot going on. He definitely, and the filmmakers definitely, had lots of coverage. Like example, he goes to the, to there's an establishment of the market. He goes to the market and then he goes to buy something out of the fridge. And when he pulls it out, you see a shot from inside the fridge of him pulling it out. That's some good coverage. Like basically everyone just shows somebody just getting something out and it seems kind of boring, but he showed it from the inside. And I know that's a little, just a little piece, but that's just an example how you can go a little bit extra to kind of pre pretty much just bring up your production value, pretty much just bring up the immersion into the film as a whole. And I thought that was very well done. I would say um, some of the shots, like there was a lot of unique lighting, like when he opened the refrigerator, the blue light from the freezer, I mean freezer, not refrigerator. That was very interesting. And we gotta say that the film was, it just had a lot of good shots in it. And first off, anyone that wants to kill an animal should, uh, well, yeah, we don't like those. I thought it was very unique how he like, like he was meditating. And every time you, you literally hear the dog throughout the whole film up until the end. And that's when you find out that when he tried to kill the dog, the dog ended up saving him because his neighbor heard the dog which was kind of funny. I think that certain scenes in there were, shouldn't be in there, such as like the sex scenes were kind of like overdone. Not every movie needs that. And they kind of overdid it in my point of view. But other than that, the film was really great and I honestly enjoyed it a lot. If you are a filmmaker who loves to tell stories, please submit your short films at internationalfilmoperations.com and click submit. Also, you can follow us on all our social networks and platforms. And there you have it guys, that concludes chapter one of the International Film Operations Film Festival. Thank you all for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in chapter two. If you have a short film that you'd like to submit, please submit to IFO so you can compete with the best in the world. With that being said, I'm your warden. I'll see you next time.